was just three when I was first fascinated by these square and rectangular boxes on my father's table. One that showed beautiful images and the other that made click-clack sounds when I tapped on them. It was not until I was in class three that I realized that the first was a monitor, the second was a keyboard and what I was talking about was computers. In the next year, when I typed right by 100, the turtle on the screen moved to the right by 100. I remember how powerful I felt, like a little master over the little universe inside the computer. In the next year, I learned how to write simple for loops that could do iterative, mundane, boring tasks like writing an imposition quick and with ease. But soon I realized this machine over which I had so much control on, it's not a dumb slave. When trained, the machine can understand a vaguely written five on a trash site. It can actually recognize your age by looking at your photo. It can recognize my face from a crowd of a thousand, create virtual realities and do much more. And all I could think, all my response, wow, magic. Computer science, especially my domain of interest, artificial intelligence, has a special capacity to empower people, solve socially relevant, sometimes impossible problems, make great impacts and also create groundbreaking discoveries. From breathing life into just hardware to creating lifelike robots like Sophia or launching SpaceX, you know, wizardly stuff. And I wanted to be a wizard. I wanted to code. So once I joined for my engineering degree at Rajagiri, I started looking around for other wizards, you know, of my age and those before me. But then I noticed a very peculiar property. The photos that are framed in my lab and that in my department library were all men. I rarely saw any women or women role models to look up to, but that's okay for a lot, I think. But anyway, I wanted to learn and I started attending these local community meetups. So I remember one of my first was this Debian release party at Kusat. So I reached a bit early and when I entered, I remember the organizer looking at me as if, L girl, have you lost your way? Are you sure you're supposed to come here? I never minded that and I went in and sat. And I started waiting for people. People did come in, but all of them were big old men. Coming from a small town, I found it very difficult to go to a group of big sturdy men and say hi. Soon, I started feeling like an ugly duckling in a boys only club, very alone, even amidst the crowd. Soon a few girls came in, but the damage of being alone was done. Anyway, the speaker started talking about something I had a no clue on. I stood there dumb. At the same time, I found that the gentleman audience around me, even the boys of my age and younger, they were asking questions that clearly indicated that they knew what the speaker was talking about. And I was like, why? We come from the, almost the same socio-economic background. We are born to almost the same educational status parents. We learn the same books, pass through the same Indian education system. And how come he knows so much about tech and I know none? Soon I realized that this problem is better defined as how come boys know so much tech and girls don't. Soon, reading a lot, talking to people a lot, I realized something. As little girls, we were at a disadvantage. When we were preparing little tea parties, so picking out a dress for our favorite Barbie doll, the, girl, the boys, the little boys, they were arranging, thinking about how to arrange blocks in such a fashion to build the longest tower. While little girls were listening to Rapunzel, and Snow White and Rose Red and so many other princes who were waiting for their prince to come in a horse and save them from their problems, little boys were watching series like Ben 10 where, little bo where another little boy was shape-shifting and saving the world. Anything is possible. While little girls wanted to be called pretty, little boys wanted to be called smart. While little girls wanted, ha were, were hanging out with their mother, preparing delicious meals, Little boys were hanging out with their dad in the garage, fixing electronic stuff and doing other manly stuff. Somehow, an unwritten rule has seeped into our little boys and girls. Girls aren't exactly supposed to be techie. But I, for one, was very fortunate that I didn't know this rule. I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to be techie and was supposed to be pretty. So, I did try to make up for this 19 years of lost learning. 
And so I thought I have to make the best out of every opportunity that I get. But what happened? Every conference that I wanted to go, every hackathon that I wanted to visit, I had to ask permission. And when I asked permission, the answer was very simple and straightforward, no. In the debates and discussions that ensued, I remember one of my teacher saying me this, and if I, you think that the world is an egalitarian place, but it's not. Life is unfair, the world is not a wish grinding factory, and it's not safe for women like me and you to go out there alone. I remember how dejected I felt, how alone I felt to beg or to fight for the freedom to dream. While boys in my class or boys of my age were working hard and achieving their dreams, here I was fighting for the right to just dream. I was devastated, I was broken, and I was complaining a lot and a lot. And I started thinking that hundreds of women before me have tried saving this or tried solving this problem. And soon I realized maybe that's the approach that we need to correct. Okay. We have all seen these days where it's sunny as it can ever be and it's raining. Sunny and it's raining. You can complain all you want about how it is not supposed to rain when it's sunny and get wet and walk around the road complaining and whining and moaning. The perfect solution might be for the rain to stop. But I don't know when we'll be, able to, we'll be capable of stopping rain. But even then, another optimized approach might be to carry an umbrella, carry a raincoat, or travel in a vehicle that has sheets over it. You know, hack the problem rather than trying to solve it. The problem that took centuries to form is going to take at least another century to be solved in the perfect sense. And the girls of today, the women and gender minorities of today, can't be dejected. So hacking was the right approach to go. So there was this hackathon, I see it was a women's hackathon in uh, Trivandrum that I really wanted to go and I got in. But again, the answer was simple, no, you are not going. To Trivandrum, no, no way you are going from Kuchi. So then what happened? I remember that my teacher saying the word alone, you can't travel alone. I looked around for girls, but they weren't exactly sharing my interests. Then. I leverage the power of community along with technology. Technology has enabled for us easy to communicate with each other with simple messaging platforms like WhatsApp and Telegram. And communities have also enabled another form of communication where people of same interests come together. So through WhatsApp, I started looking around in communities somewhere some girl would actually want to go for this women's hackathon that I am going. And from a totally different world in social, economic, educational perspective, I found another girl from another part of Kochi who also wanted to go, Sri Priya. When there were two girls, suddenly our parents started feeling it's safer. I still don't know why, but they still feel that we are safer and we can go. And we went. When Sri Priya and I realized that just another girl coming together saved a lot of girls from losing their opportunity. Now that is a hack. So there are a lot of events happening throughout Kochi, there are a lot of events happening across India, and I'm pretty sure there are a lot of girls in different parts of India who want to attend. So what about we create one simple group, one simple platform, where the girls can post the event that they want to go to, and you know we somehow form company from different parts of at least Kerala. And then a WhatsApp group was formed in the name of Women Dev. Today, that WhatsApp group has become a community called Pehia Foundation, which harbors over 300 women and aspiring coders from all across South India who just want to code, who just want to pursue their dreams. We implement hacks in Pehia. So for the lost learning of around 18, 19, 20 years, whatever you lost while you're growing up, we try to cover that up using the weekly learning sessions. And whatever competitive, right competitive spirit that a lot of us were lacking, we challenge each other on weekly coding challenges. We started grouping ourselves from different parts of Kerala to attend hackathons. Hackathon usually have an attendance of five to 10 girls on the total. We, from Behia, started attend, encouraging and attending girls to around 46% of the total. And now that was something to boast about. And these girls, who were thought as dumb or not techie, these girls were coming with prizes from these hackathons. And a lot of girls, just because they came together, was able to solve 
a problem, maybe hack a problem and pursue their dreams. But is it just about that? Is it just about you, one singular person, pursuing your dream? I think it's more than that. I sometimes used to wonder how different we would have been, history would have been, if women took up the initiative to participate equally from the very beginning. When we stopped plucking fruits and started hunting, I wonder if women tried hunting with the men together rather than staying back, would women have been thought as strong today? When we stopped, when we also started farming, if women participated equally, would women be thought as skilled today? When industrial revolution hit up, instead of just packaging materials or doing manual labor, if the women actually participated in designing these machines, wouldn't women be thought of in as, as equally intelligent today? But unfortunately, the damage was done. The stereotype was set. But today, if girls in this audience, and if I'm able to come here, stand up, talk about my dreams, it is because there were a lot of women before us who fought against these stereotypes, who worked hard, who grinded hard to pursue their dreams. It is only because of those women that I am able to stay today. So what does the future generation think, of, think about us? So what does the daughter generation think about the mummy generation? See, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that your daughter could come up and ask you, Mom, even when a lot of ladies fought before you to pursue your dreams, even when there were a lot of resources, a lot of opportunities, why did you not pursue your dream? Then you could be that whining lady who is complaining about realities, I admit, about how women are surprised I was not allowed to go out and nobody uh, was there to encourage me. All of that complaint might be true, but still whining. Or picture another scenario where your daughter comes to you and say, Mom, I know things were tough. Okay, I know at the time that you were in your youth, things were tough, women were suppressed, and it was difficult to pursue dreams. But it was because thousands of women like you pursued their dreams. Today, I don't have to fight to dream. I just have to work hard like anybody else. Which part of history do you want to be of? You can either be a part of the problem by doing nothing about it, or you can be a part of the solution. So, for the women of today, for the generation of today, it is important that we pursue our dreams, especially when it comes to tech dreams, because the generation of tomorrow is looking up to us. We missed out on agriculture, we missed out on hunting, we missed out on industrial, we barely made any presence in the science, and now it's information revolution. We need to stop standing in the sidelines and come to the mainstream history. So, for the sake of the generation of tomorrow, please stop whining and start grinding. Thank you.